I would be angry for like the rest of the day just because <laughs> I was just so like worked up, you know? Um, I don't know, because it's like if you get in an argument with somebody over like this, the tiniest thing, like you just, you stay mad for a little while, you know? So it's kind of the same thing. Um, sometimes I try to think of like things that happened to me that week, if anything, to kind of like throw myself into that space a little bit more. Um, sometimes I don't have anything, so I kind of have to pull it out of nowhere, but, um, yeah, it kind of, it, it stays with me a little bit sometimes, and, and uh, for shows like, uh, like at Sword Art and, and Your Lie in April, um, there would be times when I was just so sad, like, hours after having recorded that I would just cry, you know, just in the car on the way home and stuff like that, or, like, I'd get home and just, like, sob and want to take a nap for a good hour or whatever. Yeah, it's, it can be rough. Like, people think it's literally you just going in and, like, doing funny voices when you do voiceover, but it really takes a toll on you. Um, or it can. I, I can't speak for all actors, because some kind of just can, you know, turn it on and then turn it off. But for me, like, it, it it's like a, it, yeah, it definitely takes a toll emotionally and even physically sometimes. Um, I'll come home sometimes and have, after having done a two to four hour recording session, depending on what it's for, and I'll be exhausted and want to take a nap and not want to do anything else for the rest of the day. But, yeah, that's just my experience with it. I'm sure if you ask other people, they'll have different answers. Yeah. Cool. Um, like, what's been like your most favorite experience with like other voice actors? Like, and I think you've worked with Todd and Patrick Sykes and other people before. It's been yeah. like your favorite person or a couple of people that have, you know you've worked with. Um, yeah, uh, for anime we don't generally get to work together in the same room, um, so I don't get to see a lot of those people unless I'm at conventions like this, or if we happen to be at like a rap party or something like that, or I see them in and out of the studio. Um, uh, but as far as like Patrick Seitz goes, uh, I've worked with him as a director a few times, and he's, and I hang out with him now like a lot more, we've become really good friends, which is really cool, because he's so funny, he's like the funniest guy I know. Um, but as far as like being directed by him, sometimes he'll throw out the weirdest direction and it'll make you give him the perfect take right after he gives it to you. Like he was, there was this, I think it was maybe for, uh, I did work on um, the God Eater game that just came out and um, it, I forget what the line was, but he's basically like, pretend you're, you know, you're the coach of the volleyball team and your nephew is like, you know, down on himself, and you're trying to like cheer him up again, and I'm like, oh, okay, like, what is, all right. I'm sure he's told me weirder directions he's given other people, but I can't remember them right now. You'll have to, if you ever see him, you'll have to ask him his weird um, direction stories because he's, I'm pretty sure at least his girlfriend has them all written out, um, in a book, <laughs> which they should release. I think they should print that book. Um, but, uh, I feel like my. My favorite story about another voice actor is actually, because uh, some, sometimes people will ask, have you ever met your Japanese counterpart for anything you've worked on? So I've actually met the Seiyu who does Ryuko's voice. I met her at Anime Expo two or three years ago when we were doing this big Kill a Kill event. And um, I was walking into the DOS hall at the time and the director for the English dub, or the producer for the English dub came out and she's like, oh, uh, Ami Koshimizu, who voices Ryuko in Japanese, is here. Would you like me to introduce you to her? And I was like, yes. Like, why would I say no to that? And I'm wearing, like, my dorky, like, Ryuko varsity jacket at the time. Um, so she comes out, and she's, like, you know, taking pictures with fans. And um, when she's done with that, she turns around, and she sees me, and immediately notices the jacket, and turns me around, and is, like, freaking out over my jacket, because she thinks it's the coolest thing. And I'm just like... <laughs> I'm just, like trying not to fangirl myself just because I was like I need to be professional this is like she's been working in the industry for years she's like super professional this is fine she's freaking out over me this is fine I'll be okay just pretend to be cool it's fine um, and then uh, the producer tells her who I am and she starts freaking out even more. So uh, she wants to like take a picture with me and stuff like that. So we take a picture. And I don't speak Japanese and she doesn't speak very good English. So we had to have our conversation translated between us. And it was a short conversation, but 
I'll never forget that uh, apparently she had said that she was glad to have somebody share her pain. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so as, as far as like the screaming goes, so that was like really cool, I think, that she said that. And um, we had a, after the big actual Kill a Kill event that we, we had, um, we all went backstage and took, you know, pictures with cosplayers and the, the singer for one of the themes and the, the, the Japanese voice actors. Um, a few of us were there, like, who was it? I think it was me, Dave Vincent, Patrick Seitz, Christine Marie Kavanos, and Sarah Williams. And we all went backstage and, you know, um, taking pictures. And she uh, kind of, like, calls me over and she tries to, to talk to me, but there was no translator nearby, so I have no idea what she said to this day, but I was just like, oh my god, we're like best friends now. This is, this is cool. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that was really special. Oh, just like a side question. Have you ever, like, met or friends or acquaintances with, like, Vic? Uh, yeah, I, I did a con with Vic. I'm sure I've done one before this, but we, we had dinner together at a con with other people at Anime Vegas? Otacon yes. Vegas? Um, I don't know him too well, but he seems like a nice guy. I like a lot of his work, but it's really cool, you know, just being in his presence sometimes. Because <laughs> he's so, like, he's been working forever. I think one of the first things I, I, I knew him for was, uh, I don't know if anybody saw Sayuki. Sayuki was, like, one of my favorite shows way back when. He plays a character named Kogaji, and I was like, oh my god, it's that guy. <laughs> but, yeah, it's, it's cool um, being in stuff. Oh, seven I like actually one of my favorite things. Oh, yeah, seven um, That one's a, a really popular one. Like, I was really surprised how popular it was, but I guess because it's so easily accessible on Netflix. Um, it, was, it was really fun. I had never heard of it before we started working on it. I actually did not audition for the show at all, uh, which kind of made me upset because I really wanted to audition for Hawk. I love Hawk. The oh, little shit. piggy. Um, but uh, Deanne ended up being really fun, like they just ended up uh, casting me as Deanne because of other work I'm assuming that I've done. And um, she, she's really fun and cute and I am slightly mad at her though because she's like obsessed with Meliodas and I'm like, why? He doesn't, he's a, he's a scumbag, like, <laughs> kid loves you for who you are and you're worried about like Meliodas not liking you because you're a giant woman. It's like, no, just love King. He loves you. <laughs> right? <sighs> At least, if not King, then Hauser. Like, Hauser's probably the second, you know, Hauser, whatever. But King, King, King and Deanne. That's all I care about. Hopefully, I don't know if we're doing the second season yet. Like, that hasn't been confirmed. But, um, I know they're doing